It's time to fire this thing up. Hit it. Jonathan, now try the other side. All right, what are you having him do there, Tim? I'm having him check for air in the system. If there's air in the system, the motor will move back and forth. If there isn't, if it's just oil, it'll, that motor will be rock solid. Okay, well, good deal you made it. Hi, I'm John Graviscus. This is Tim Howard from Boat Steering Solutions. And you did the hydraulic steering system for the Taco Marine project boat over at your shop. Yes, we did. And, and it's got twin Yamahas on that. And, and when we pushed on those motors, because it was done properly, no air in the system, they were rock solid, they did not move. Jonathan's moving this engine back and forth. You're telling us that's an indication, a visual sign, saying, hey, you got air in your hydraulic steering. It's gonna affect the performance of the boat. We now, when, when we push the engines on the Taco Marine Project boat, they're moving now too because we had a last minute donation where a company donated a lot of great electronics, including autopilot, and they cracked the hydraulic steering system that you and I did mm -hmm. on the boat, and we've got air in that system. Mm -hmm. Now, now kind of guys, just to recap, last time on the program, Bert, actually used our professional piece of equipment, which is right here. This is a Sea Star Power Purge Junior. And he went to use it on the taco boat to bleed it. The motor was working, but it wasn't pumping anything. We brought it over to your shop and you rebuild these for marine mechanics for like $280. You put in some new screens with the motor you put in a separate filtration system on it. So now if our hydraulic oil is clean, we can kind of move from boat to boat to boat without contaminating it cleans anything. cleans the old oil. It's okay. coming out of, the, uh, out of the boat. You also added some brackets. What are those for? We added the two brackets at each end so we could organize the electrical wiring so it's just not all piled down in the system. T take a look at how we brought it to his shop. Okay, very disorganized. This is so clean. This is so tight. and. Tim, most people in the audience are not going to have a professional piece of equipment like this, okay? Mm -hmm. But occasionally, you do have to crack the hydraulic lines to maintain your hydraulic steering. For example, your helms, sometimes they get what's called muddy. Mm -hmm. Why do they get contaminated? How does that happen? They get muddy because there's a vent cap on the top and that vent allows air to go in and out and when the temperature changes outside, brings a little bit of moisture in each time. That moisture goes after the steel that's in the, in the helm and starts to corrode it. And then we get this rust material that floats in the system. We call that mud. Okay, now guys, when you have your hydraulic helm rebuilt or your ram rebuilt, one of the worst things in the world that you can do is cap those lines immediately and hold that oil and just add a little bit to your system because everything that's contaminated inside your hydraulic steering system is gonna be contaminated, okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna show you today how to properly evacuate a hydraulic steering system, then how to put in fresh oil, but we're gonna show you how to do it manually. And I was hoping you could teach my son, Jonathan, to where people at home could glean that information and maybe show them how to do it properly themselves. Could we you stick around and do yes. that? Yes. Guys, today's program is gonna be so critical, but first we need to give acknowledgement to all the fantastic companies who help make ShipShape TV possible. ShipShape TV, where boat improvement lives, is made possible by the entire collection of beautiful Sunbrella fabrics. Sunbrella, the only fabric to offer both design and performance above and below deck by Boat Outfitters, your source for replacement hardware, custom king starboard doors, tackle centers, and more. Need it? They'll build it. Visit BoatOutfitters.com to update or customize your boat today by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. And by the TaylorMade Group. 
leading marine manufacturers of original and replacement boat tops and covers. Windshields, windows, and hard to find replacement parts. Aftermarket accessories, our all new custom T-top covers, and more. Let us help you make your boat look ship shape again. This Quicksilver prop can be brought back to like new condition at a fraction of the price over new thanks to the pros at General Propeller. However, want new? Nobody sells for less, up to 35% off retail. General Propeller restores aluminum props back to factory specs, inboard props back to like new at a fraction of the price over new. All brands, all metals, all perfect once again. Need your prop fixed? Go to GeneralPropeller.com now. Keep them coming, guys. Let's talk marine exhaust. Hi, I'm Pete Galasso from Lighthouse Marine Supply. Here's what we are stocking. Bar exhaust risers, a critical part of a marine engine's exhaust system, and here's a bar exhaust manifold. I tell customers when you need the best saltwater replacement exhaust manifolds and risers, there's none better than Bar Marine. Best yet, marineengineparts.com. You'll save 25 to 30% off OE prices. Back to stocking, guys. This is why we call them Ocean Tamer. Total body support and comfort. Shock absorbing marine beanbag chairs. Ocean Tamer, the most comfortable seat on board. Crafted from 100% marine grade materials. Built tough to handle the harsh marine environment. Water repellent. UV stabilized. Ocean Tamer marine beanbags. Four awesome styles. Tons of color choices. Can be personalized with boat name or logo. Finally, two nylon handles for ease of carrying or stowing. Order yours today. Ocean-Tamer.com. Welcome back. You're watching ShipShape TV, boat improvement made easy. We're here in the boat shop, and a little while ago, we had our helm rebuilt by our friends over at Boat Steer. Guys, whenever we sent the helm off to you, which you did a fantastic job rebuilding, by the way, we did what most boaters do. We broke the lines underneath the helm, capped them so we wouldn't lose a drop of oil, sent it off to you, you rebuilt it, you sent it back to us, we hooked it back up, added a little extra fluid just to get some of the air out of there. We had no play in the engine, but now we have a little bit of play. What's going on? Well, in that case, there's two issues that you have with your install. First is the micro bubbles that have gotten into the system. We'll talk about that later. Second is the idea that when you put the new helm in that we overhauled, we cleaned everything out, but now the dirty oil is still in the lines, still in the cylinder. So you really have to purge that out also. As a matter of fact, Seastar recommends every two to three years changing the oil in the helm, even though you're not bleeding it or purging it or anything sort like that. Sort of like an oil change in a car. Just an oil change in a car, same thing. So what you want to do in order to get that, the rest of that remaining oil out, there's two bleed ports on the cylinder. Uh, you get yourself two short pieces of hoses, uh, plastic hose, put it on the bleed port, get a little catch basin, open the bleed fittings on each side, then you can start to turn the wheel port, keep running the port until you pump everything out, turn the wheel to starboard, keep going while you pump everything out. Now you've got most of the oil out of the system, okay. but you're not finished yet. You have to get the remaining oil out of the cylinder, and there's some still sitting down the bottom. To do that, you leave your bleed ports open, your tank, you manually move the motor, port and starboard, back and forth. That will cause the cylinder to pump the rest of the oil out, the bad oil out, into the, into the buckets. So once we've gotten rid of all of that, our system is totally dry. We need to then refill it with fresh, brand new oil. And Daryl, there's a kit that Seastar makes. This is part of it. It's an adapter, I guess. Mm -hmm. How do we use this and how do we fill that oil back up? Okay, this end of the adapter, that will go into the fill on your helm. This end screws onto your quart of Sea uh, Star oil. It comes with a little punch pin that you'll punch a hole in the bottom of the uh, quart bottle. And now you've got this upside down like an IV. At that point in time, you will be turning your wheel uh, in one direction until you get clean, air free oil coming out of the bleeder on that side. So the bleeders, while we're doing this, they're still open. Still open. The bleeders are open. We're Turn the wheel one direction until we get clean, and by clean we mean no air bubbles, solid oil oil coming out of that bleeder. At that time, turn the wheel in the opposite direction until you get clean oil coming out of the 
bleeder again. Then close the bleeders. At yes. that point, what do we do? Then we're going to go into purging the system. We're going to turn the steering wheel to the starboard. Okay. Where then we'll open the starboard bleeder. Okay. Then turn the wheel slowly to the port until we get clean oil coming back out of the starboard bleeder. Again, clean oil meaning no air bubbles, solid, because this is all fresh, brand new oil that's in the system. So solid oil coming out of the bleeder is what we want. Correct. Then what do we do? Close that bleeder, and then we're going to turn the wheel to the port. And then once the engine's to the port, open up the port bleeder and turn the wheel back to the starboard. Okay. Until we get clean oil again coming out. Again, no air bubbles, clean oil that way. At that point, are we done? At that point, you're going to want to wait till the next day. Okay. Because you are going to have some micro bubbles in the oil. That was what Tim was telling me was our problem. So what are micro bubbles? They're, they're little fine bubbles that uh, as you're bleeding this system, um, you're going to have a little oil foaming. So it, it's just little fine bubbles that get in the oil and they're going to come back out and, and form big bubbles again. Okay. And, and that's, so we didn't go back the day after we refilled our system to get those bubbles out. That's right. why we have the play there. Once we've done that a day or two after, let it sit, then it's going to be rock solid. It's going to be perfect. Rock solid. Excellent. That sounds great, you guys. You guys are a fantastic resource on anything to do with hydraulic steering, hydraulic ramp, the whole, the whole system. You guys know it top to bottom. Go pull the plug. The boats, the tools, and ShipShape TV will be back in a snap. Master your most challenging offshore experience with confidence and ease with Yamaha Helmmaster. Precise, intuitive control on the open sea. Unrivaled ease for maneuvering and docking in port. And now Setpoint adds three new dimensions to boat control. Maintain boat position with fish point, or a position and heading with stay point, or a heading while you drift with drift point. Yamaha Helmmaster. Now with Setpoint. Complete digital control for today's larger offshore boats. We're Siren Marine. We design and build technology that gives you the power to know whether your boat is safe, secure, and ready to enjoy. The Siren Marine MTC is a practical solution that lets you connect to your boat from anywhere and monitor all your critical systems such as battery, bilge, temperature, shore power, and so much more. Never again be in the dark about your boat status. With the MTC, you'll have peace of mind and a better boating experience. Protect bare metal from the damaging effects of salt, grime, and water with the long-lasting power of the Hyde. Shark Hyde Metal Protective. Shark Hyde for decades has been the only way to keep plain, randomized aluminum looking like new. Indefinitely. It's the only product that goes on in seconds and dries to the touch fast. Yet lasts years and years. Preserve that diamond plate. Coat stainless steel hardware. Hide all signs of aging from all bare metals with the Hyde. Shark Hyde. So what are you waiting for? Order now. Welcome back aboard. Fishing for boat improvement? Well, you caught it right here at ShipShape TV. We are back in the boat shop. Hi, I'm Jonathan Graviscus, and it's time to do some more maintenance on another Yamaha engine. This is John Talley with Boats.net. Good morning. John, thanks for being on. Not a problem at all. This is a 2015 Yamaha 225. Mm -hmm. We have never replaced the impeller on that. Is so, that bad? Yes, you have to replace the impellers every year or 100 hours, and you're a little bit overdue. So what happens, even if you use the boat every day or only once a year, the rubber starts to get hard, gets brittle, then it can break up, overheat your en engine, and then you're stranded. You could say it's kind of like changing tires and we've been running bald for a little bit. Yes, you have. Okay, so I know a lot about boats, boating. I grew up doing this kind of stuff, but my uncle is really the mechanically inclined one. I live out in Seattle now. He's always done this stuff for me. I don't know if I'm comfortable enough doing this by myself. I'd probably take it to a dealer. What am I gonna pay a dealer to do this change for me? If you take it into a shop just for this simple of a surface, you're looking at around $350. Oh my gosh. I mean, you can save yourself a lot of money if you come to us. We're a one-stop shop. We've got all the parts, we've got the diagrams, and if you need help, we've got a call center to help walk you through it. And once you order the parts, 
you know, they'll be there in a couple of days because nobody stocks more parts than we do. We're the largest buyer of OEM factory parts in the world, and we've got an excellent fill rate. So when you call us, we're going to have your part. Well, let me get my brother here to help us uh, with this. Could you walk me through the process of what we need to do? Okay, it's really simple. What we're going to do is need to uh, just drop the lower unit, and basically it's held in place by seven 14 millimeter bolts. The six around the front, you'll see three on either side, really easy to get to. The hidden one is up under the skeg at the very back. Once you get number seven out, have your friend help lower it down and lift it out and put it on a bench of a table like this with some type of stand to hold it upright. This stand right here is one that my dad had just lying around the shop. You can find them on Amazon for under 200 bucks. You can build them out of wood. You just need them kind of upright, correct? That's all you're after. With that gap right there for the skeg. Correct, because the lower unit's gonna be sitting right in, right in front of you. And what you see at the top is gonna be a white plastic cover. What you're gonna do is remove the bolts for that, lift it off, and then that's gonna expose the actual impeller itself. It's as simple as just lifting off the old impeller putting on the new one, add some type of lubricant. It can either be some type of grease or just soapy water. Then when you're putting the housing down, you rotate it down and then rebolt it. After that, all you have to do is just remount it through the engine. It is that simple. And make sure that you grease all your splines exactly. and just while you have it all taken apart, make sure it's all good to go. And I mean, you guys are just jam packed full of information on your site, folks.net. You've got exploded diagrams, you've yes. got videos, you've got, I mean, really in depth how to stuff. You're also the largest seller of Yamaha OEM parts, any engine OEM parts, Mercury, Evinrude, anything. You guys have it. You are truly the place to go for outboard service. What's the website one more time? Boats.net. There's no other place you'd rather be than on the water, living your passion. Whether it's a serene day at the lake, cruising the coastline, or using the wind to power you along your course, only Sunbrella Fabrics combine style and comfort above and below deck with the absolute best performance and warranty on land and sea. One man with his one and only pride and joy. Give that man literally one minute and his boat, no matter what the style, now is completely protected from sun damage all the way to the waterline. Hull sides, vinyl seats, even the outboards. OneMinuteBoatCover.com When your current mooring cover is too heavy and awkward to handle alone. OneMinuteBoatCover.com Seven year warranty on the fabric, lifetime on the track and frame. OneMinuteBoatCover.com Your link to covering your baby completely in less than one minute's time. Attention waterfront property owners already sold on the fact that synthetic lumber for decks and docks is far superior to the pitfalls of pressure treated wood. You know about the splintering and the weathering issues. However, not every composite board sold is alike. Some turn chalky, decay due to mold and mildew. Most fade in color with age, though not true when you opt for the best. Lumber Rock, the fastest growing manufacturer of synthetic lumber on and around the waterfront. Lumber Rock, we never fade away. Welcome back aboard. Ship Shape TV is back on the job. We are again back here in the boat shop, Jonathan Graviscus, and we have the pleasure of having John Talley on Thanks. with us again. How you doing this morning? Doing great, John. Last time, you were telling me how to replace an impeller on our Yamaha 225. It had its 100 hour mark, mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was time to, to change the impeller. That's actually part of a larger project we're doing on this engine, mm -hmm. which is doing the 100 hour service. Man, that's 100 hours or annually, so keep that in mind. And that's a fairly intensive process. It, it is, but it's nothing that a do-it-yourselfer can't you know, handle on their own, with a little help from us, maybe. Well, if you were to take it to a dealer, mm -hmm. what are you gonna spend on service to, to have it done? If you have to go through every single aspect that we're about to run through, I know you're going to be looking at at least $750 just for labor. Wow. And this is something you could do in a weekend. If you, yes. If you know what you're doing, if you, you guys do. Take your time. Go through the steps. If you get in trouble, contact us. We can walk you through it. These are all a bunch of different mini projects. You guys have a ton of resources on how to do every specific one with exploded diagrams and your site 
and videos, tutorials, I mean, every nitpicking thing you guys cover. Let's blow through a couple of the things okay. that we're gonna do and then focus on, on, on something that we're gonna talk about today. Sure, that'd be fine. Well, you wanna start off by doing your lower gear case oil. Go ahead and freshen it up with a new set of spark plugs. Take a look at your fuel filter, make sure it's not stopped up. Yamaha actually makes kits for each individual engine that have the correct amount of oil and then also the correct uh, oil filter associated with it. We've already talked about the, uh, the, the impeller. At length, so, yes. Yeah, that, that needs to be done. Beyond that, you need to inspect all your anodes. Okay, so let's focus on anodes because we actually haven't talked a lot about that on the show. Uh, I see them on every piece of running gear that's out there, mm -hmm. but why, what's the, what's the point? Okay, the reason being is there's elect inherent electricity inside of salt water or any body of water for that matter. Salt water happens to be the highest, so it is the most intrusive as far as this goes. And the anode system is designed to be eaten away instead of your actual boat motor. If you've got them with in any place on the motor that's in contact with the water that it's sitting in. So that can be on the lower unit, that can be at the gimbal housing, and that can also mean actually on the engine itself where you've got the water jackets or the uh, salt water or whatever water it is that's getting pumped through the engine for cooling got anodes there as well. So it's kind of, it's, it's junk metal to keep your nice metal safe. Exactly. In different kinds of water, fresh, salt, brackish, mm -hmm. are there different kinds of anodes? There are, there's actually three different types that the industry uses. Um, you've got the zinc, then you've got aluminum, and you've got magnesium. Magnesium, that's the one you want to use in fresh water. Zinc is kind of a crossover. You can use it in brackish and salt water. That'd be the one I'd recommend for almost everything, unless you're in in one of the Great Lakes where you're never gonna have your boat in salt water, salt water, then you can go to the magnesium. How do we know if an anode is, is eaten enough? How do we know we need to replace it? Well, it looks like it's been soaked in acid because it's gonna be eaten away. And when it gets to about 50%, you need to go ahead and replace it. Okay. Now granted, on a boat like yours that stays on the trailer most of the time, it's safe to say they're gonna last a longer period of time versus a boat that stays in the water at the dock because you run the risk of stray current from another boat or the electrical system of the, uh, the dock itself not being done correctly or bonded correctly. That can cause stray current and it can destroy anodes in a couple of months. But no matter where you keep your boat, you gotta be mindful, you gotta keep watch out for it. Just, just be aware, Yes. just know. Well, we're gonna look at our engine. Our engine has 10 on it. Every engine is different. Again, go look at the exploded diagrams for whatever engine you have on boats.net. We're going to go look at ours. If there are any that need to be replaced, we're going to replace them. We're going to do the whole 100-hour service. If you need to do anything in there, again, go to boats.net, look at their instructions, look at their whole stuff. It's an amazing resource. They have all of the parts at the best prices on the market with all of these amazing resources and you get your parts in two days. One more time, that site. Very simple, boats.net. That's right, in my world, it takes an entire village to raise a boat. More guest experts from the marine industry right after this. This Quicksilver prop can be brought back to like new condition at a fraction of the price over new, thanks to the pros at General Propeller. However, want new? Nobody sells for less, up to 35% off retail. General Propeller restores aluminum props back to factory specs, inboard props back to like new at a fraction of the price over new. All brands, all metals, all perfect once again. Need your prop fixed? Go to generalpropeller.com now. Now in our 45th year, KenCraft introduces the all-new 2020 KenCraft Bay Rider Bay Boats and Skiffs, powered exclusively by Yamaha, specifically designed to fish hard, specifically designed to cruise well with your family. Can there really be one boat that does both exceedingly well? Yes, there can, with a KenCraft. KenCraft, top-tier fit and finish. KenCraft, only the best, most expensive marine hardware integrated. Can it be yours? Of course it can. Affordably, KenCraftBoats.com. One man with his one and only pride and joy. Give that man literally one minute and his boat, no matter what the style, now is completely protected from sun damage all the way to the waterline. Hull sides, vinyl seats, even the outboards. OneMinuteBoatCover.com When your current mooring cover is too heavy and awkward to handle alone. OneMinuteBoatCover.com 
Seven year warranty on the fabric, lifetime on the track and frame. One minute boat cover.com. Your link to covering your baby completely in less than one minute's time. Welcome back. You're tuned into Ship Shape TV, America's favorite boat improvement show. Last year, we washed down a brand new aluminum trailer. We rinsed it off, we completely dried it, and then we wanted to protect all of the metal. The aluminum, the steel springs from rusting, we wanted to guard against corrosion and galvanize steel hardware. And we had this gentleman, Clint Bland, the owner of Shark Hide, on the program, teaching us how to protect it for the very first time. Well, Clint, it's been a year. All right. It's time to reapply. And our goal is to keep this aluminum trailer looking brand new forever, okay? And this is how it left our shop a year ago. Here's how it looks a year later, Right. okay? It's, it looks the same. That's what you want. That's why you want to use the shark hide. You don't want it changing colors right. or rusting. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about how you taught us how to do the hardware. You use the shark hide, you put it into a spray applicator, and you saturate the hardware. You want to do it again now that it's a year correct. later, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. You also taught us how to use the shark hide and put it on a special bird's eye weave cotton that you sell. You get 10 of these guys, which will last you 10 years on the trailer, okay? And I think it's like 20 bucks. Correct. It's, mm -hmm. it's nominal. But it's so critical, this bird's eye weave cotton, because what this does is it doesn't absorb moisture. It literally, it, it takes it away from a baby's skin and wicks it away yeah, that and weave, puts it on that surface. That particular weave moves moisture from wet towards dry faster than any other weave known. So and, that's and why And everything else kind of takes it the opposite direction. Right, and it we're trying to apply the, the material. Okay, Correct. so this is the only applicator that you use. You, you were talking about uh, coating it. You can go about 10 feet on a smooth surface. You move over and you come back and you want right. to cover all of your smooth surfaces. You were talking about the diamond plates, a different type of pattern that you're swiping the shark out on because you got all those bumps on the diamonds, you know? So you kind of want to go four foot only. So we kind of go up, we immediately come back, then we come over, we go up and we come back and we do like in our case, a half a fender at a time. Right. I want to help guys that are trailering a lot, especially down here in Florida, we get a lot of uh, sand on the road or whatever. Mm -hmm. How can we help protect the leading edges of our fender wells and stuff like that from highway damage? How often do we want to reapply What I would hide? suggest you do is instead of, let's say, a fresh coat annually on the whole trailer, I would suggest maybe, especially if you do a lot of highway miles, I would say once every six to eight months maybe, go out and reapply just on the leading edges of your trailer, okay. leading edges of the fenders and P things like that. Pick up that box. This is what Clint shipped to me on that box right there. If you could just right. pick that up and show that. You can get your shark hide, you can get your special applicators, everything else, and where do people get that? If they want to protect anything on the boat, or around the house, or in the garage that has metal, that they don't want it to rust, or corrode, or oxidize. Yeah, you can order it at sharkhide.com and we'll get it out the same day. Closed captioning provided by the over two decade video library at the all new Ship Shape TV website. Available now worldwide online with paid subscription. Makes a great gift with a special boater search engine for ease of use. Hurry, the introductory price ends soon. So watch any episode, old or new, on any device at the all new ShipShapeTV.com.